everyone, it's Mads from Denim and Leather and I'm here with Toby Jackson from the new band Wayward Sons. How are you? Hello, I'm very well. You? I'm fine, thank good, you. Good, good, good. So, Wayward Sons is a new band. Yeah. Um, how have you been getting on? You did your first gig a couple of nights ago. Two days ago, yeah. How did it go? Yeah, it went great. Um, yes, it was a little bit seat of the pants, as we call it. So that's a technical term for scared to death. No, um, no it was great. Um, it's kind of a bit of an odd, odd one because we, you know, we, the band hasn't been together all that long, but we've taken quite a long time to sort of compose the music and get in the studio and figure all that stuff out. So um, we, I, I didn't really expect to be out touring quite so quickly, actually. So, but we got offered a few shows, and you've got to start somewhere. You know, what I mean, it's a whole new project. So um, I think the Bristol show. I mean, I'm I live around there anyway. So, but we put the put the whole thing on sale and hope for hope for the best that people would care and it sold out in a, in a very short space of time so we went out in front of a packed audience you know with a whole bunch of songs no one had ever heard before <laughs> and um, had, a, had a great time and that's you know that's for me and I think for the rest of the guys is what rock and roll is all about really it's not supposed to be something that's utterly precise and you know and um, detail perfect it's almost about the energy and the spirit of it all and we had a great time yeah. so as you mentioned there you were playing new songs how did they go down well, we've released two songs uh, with with the kind of we've been we've filmed four uh, videos. I've got a narrative that runs through them, which we're releasing uh, every month uh, leading up to the release of the album. We've released two of them uh, until the end and alive, which are off the record. Um, and so, surprisingly, when we did those songs, everyone sang every single word. So that was kind of quite that's a bit of a shock. I didn't quite expect that, but but that was fantastic. But you know, I think the thing is when you make a record is that what you hope is that the music is strong enough and can transfer easily enough for people to kind of understand it immediately and um, you know, I think by and large we got a great reaction for every single tune that we played you know so um, so far so good so being ex Little Angels do you feel under pressure to play Little Angels tracks well we do do a couple of Little Angels tracks but but I do that kind of on purpose at, the, at this stage because we have to you know we have to connect it back I mean I have to be honest I wasn't going to do it but all the rest of the guys went you gotta do it you gotta do it and actually when I thought about it I thought it makes a lot of sense because you know specifically um, kicking up dust we play that live because that that track is by and large the reason why um, the name of the band is what it is because uh, I paraphrased the Kansas song um, carrying my wayward son as, as a sort of um, as a reason for uh, to understand what rock for, for me when I was a kid when I, when I was when I was a kid that that track really resonated with me as a as a as a kind of su a, it summed up what I felt rock and roll was about really this kind of idea that there are people people who get into rock and roll and get into music by and large are looking for a sense of freedom are looking for a sense of a different way of life a different way of enjoying your life and expressing yourself and all the rest of it so i i paraphrased that title in kicking up dust when i was a young songwriter you know um, with the little angels and so when it came to deciding which songs to play that one was a easy one you know um and I think it's important that we, you know, we somehow connect backwards anyway. I don't think I'll, I don't really think we'll end up playing Little Angel songs forever. Um, and I quite fancy the idea of playing some of the more lesser known tunes a little bit, I think, really, if we possibly could. Um, but we'll see, you know. And we've only got, actually, 43 minutes worth of music with our album anyway. So if we're going to try and do a headliner set, you've got to have other things to play as well. So there's a practical reason as well, you know. So. So we're here at the Rock and Blues Custom Show today, but I hear you've got quite a busy weekend. What else are you doing? Yeah, well, we go from this to Rambling Band tomorrow, and we're playing the Rising Stage, which is the um, new band stage, which uh, we're looking forward to. And we finish off uh, Steel House in Abervale, which is another great rock and roll festival that's sort of relatively new, you know. Um, and we've, we've just announced some shows with the UFO, which are happening in September, and we've got a couple of other things that we're just confirming at the moment, which we should be releasing um, the news of pretty soon. So yeah, pretty busy. So your album's due out in September. That's right. As you said, you've released two of the tracks already. How mm -hmm. have they gone down? Well, I mean, remarkably well, actually. I mean, I, you know, you don't, I don't think you really know when you make a record, um, you know, how people are going to react. It doesn't matter what your history is. It doesn't matter what you've done before. I think people react accordingly to the thing that you're doing at the time, you know. Um, and so all we can really do is be as honest as we can and go and make the best record we can uh, and put it out, you know, and you sort of hope for the best. But I think there was a kind of, I think there's been a real sense of, um, I think amongst the guys, because it was a totally fresh 
bunch of people, you know, um, all of the guys, we, we'd never worked with each other before, apart from me and Dave, the keyboard player. Um, and so I think we ha we've had this sort of sense of the unknown the whole way through and then enjoying the fact that it felt so fresh and it was exciting and interesting. And, and I think that kind of carried forward into the idea of how we sell the record. And we've kept it very, I, I mean, some of the things that I've done on this record, I've never done before on a record, like the artwork, um, the way that we've portrayed ourselves in video, um, the social media activity, you know, etc., etc. Um, and it is a brave new world. I mean, the, it's um, it's interesting to see how the fans react so quickly, isn't it? You know, these days it's like it's immediately there, and you get a reaction, and you you sort of like it can be overwhelming actually. And I think also you can kind of think you're a huge band in a, in a very small cordon because Facebook and all that you know, reacts like that, doesn't it? You know, but I think um, genu generally the um, the record label loves it. Uh, the fans are loving it and the, rev the kind of idea of the reviews we're getting back from some of the magazines is coming up very positive. But I'm most interested in what the fans think and um, so far it's been fantastic. And you've been producing younger bands like Toastland who will mm. be playing tonight. Yeah. Um, so you've never really been away from the music scene but what made you pick up the mic again and start playing live? I got bullied into it frankly by quite a few people, including a couple in this room, which I'm not going to draw any attention to whatsoever. But, um, nah, I mean, it's one of them, it's like a kind of, I spent so many years being a gun for hire in other people's bands, you know, I played in, I sang for Gun, you know, Fast Eddie Clark, and Fast Way, I played with Eddie for a long time, and, um, and, I, and also um, DOC Cyples, I spent a couple of years touring the world with that, and, but the thing is with that is it's, as great as it is, and as amazing as it is singing songs like the Black Sabbath tracks and Dio songs and all the rest of it, they're effectively, they're other people's tunes. They're not, it's not my material. So you kind of get into the situation where, or I got into a situation where I felt, I just, I don't want to do this anymore. Because it's, I don't feel like I'm doing myself any justice really, as much as it was great fun um, and a real privilege. Um, I just sort of said to myself, you know, well, if I'm going to do this again, it's got to be right. I've got to have the right label. I've got to have the right people around it. And I've got to really feel really happy that, that the situation has the best possible chance of, of achieving what it needs to achieve, you know. So, um, and then when Frontiers came knocking on the door, you know, um, I'd literally probably only about half a year before said all this to myself. I'm not going to do this anymore, you know. And then they, they knocked on the door and it was like, well, okay, well, if that's gonna you know if that's the situation then let's let's make it right but i've got to say that nick in the band the bass player he was um, instrumental in um kicking me in the arse and saying don't be an idiot go and do something you know and um and uh, you know he was right you know it's been the best decision i've made for years and and it feels very honest i think that's the thing it feels very honest and so that those things combined all this kind of all these pieces in the jigsaw puzzle once they all joined up it was like well okay i get that you know we, we should do it and and, um, and the other great thing is I don't feel any pressure about it at all. I don't think, I'm not thinking, oh my God, I've got to prove all this stuff. I've got to go and, oh, I actually feel really zen about it, really relaxed and really, you know what, if it happens, great. If it doesn't, then I've still made the best record I've ever made. I still feel amazing about the songs. I love the guys I'm in the band with. I've got great people around me. So if all that fails, that's just, that's just down to people not liking the music. And actually that feels really cool and really calm. Oh, yeah. So what have you enjoyed most about the process? I think actually working with a whole new bunch of people, that's been really eye-opening and extremely, um, it's hard to describe it. It's, I worked with a lot of the same people for a long time and you kind of get entrenched in, in how that works and you sort of get used to the comfort blanket of knowing what that is. So I think uh, working with entirely new people allows that kind of broader sense of possibility and I think also the, the guys have brought um, all their A-game to this and I didn't know how Nick was going to play bass with the band and how he was going to react with Phil the drummer and how Sam and I knew Sam a little bit because I'd produced his band um, that I was working with to the Trees and Kings and I knew he was an amazing player but how that reacts to me and how that works backwards into the songs you never know what that's going to be and so I think that was what was great about it is there was this there was no holds barred there was no prehistory particularly it was just should we see what happens? And that was it. Really exciting. I can remember the first day of rehearsals. We, I took in a load of ideas. We worked on a few bits and pieces. Me and Sam had, me and Nick had done a couple of bits, and we just put the songs out, the ideas out there. And by the end of two days, we had seven backing tracks, pretty much as you hear them, by and large, on the on the record. And I've never in my life, as making records for 30 years, ever had that. So that I think that says something, you know. 
So where can people get in touch and find out more about Wayward Sons? Oh, uh, well, through the usual social media uh, sites, obviously. So it's waywardsonsband.com is the, is the uh, website, and you can pre-order the record there and sort of follow all the links back. But we've got a Facebook page. There's Wayward Fans um, page on Facebook as well, which is Gathering Pace. We've got a Twitter feed. You know, it's all the normal places. But if you go to the site, you can follow all those the links there. And, um, yeah, just the usual places and Frontiers obviously as well, Frontiers, record, uh, Frontiers Records have got a YouTube page which we're, we're posting everything on there as well so all that. And do you have a message for your fans? Um, I just, I, yeah I just say thank you, I mean I don't understand why I'm still here really, I mean you know you kind of think a lot of the time, I think a lot of musicians think you, you're looking over your shoulder thinking will I ever get found out you know, but it's just wonderful that people still care, it really is you know. Um, and as long as it continues like that, as long as people show that they want to be in, they are interested and they want to hear the music, then, uh, then from, I think I'll carry on, you know. If that wanes and it's like, you know, what the hell's he doing back? If I get that sense, then I think it's probably time to call it a day, you know. But so far, it doesn't feel like that, so thank you very much. Well, thank you so much for chatting. Make sure you check out Wayward Sons and come back to Denver and Butter for more. Bye.